Hi guys, Mr. Offalwaffles here. Today I'll be showing you how to do the Rave in the Redwoods Easter Egg. No nonsense, straightforward, let's go. First of all, turn on the power. Very easy to do, I've got a guide for it on my channel and in the description down below if you don't know how to do it. Secondly, you need to build the boat in order to get to the island on the map. So there are three parts for this and I'm going to show you all of them now. The first part can be found by Toughnuff. It's in that very same room in the attic. So you have to have the power on to get this thing, but you go in there, it's on the right side of the room. The second can be found in the rave area of the map, so you go down towards the recreation area as it's called and you'll find that the paddle, or the second part that you're looking for here, is just lying against this kind of kiosk type hut thing. And then the third part is going to be a propeller for the boat that you're building and so you're going to want to go through to the mess hall and it's going to be lying just against this pillar here. Once you've grabbed all those, go over to the docks area of the map, the beach where the boat is. and before you get on the boat, just look on the floor here and you should see a film reel which you can pick up and you're going to use that to pack a punch during your game. Then get on the boat and if you've got teammates, they can get on it with you and it'll come back around if they miss it, so don't worry, but go to the island and once you're there, you can do two or actually really three things, okay? First of all, talk to Kevin. He's in the island, just above the fireplace, so go have a chat with him, listen to what he says. Also, while you're there, grab the second film reel, and that will get you access to the projector, which is in that very room, and once you activate the projector, you can go and teleport to Pap whenever you want. And the third thing you're going to want to do is grab a sausage from the bucket of sausages in the corner. Once you've talked to Kevin, go back into the map via the zip line and head towards the recreation area once again. There, you'll find that where the karma is, so that's behind all the DJing equipment and behind that big wooden statue, you'll find that there's actually a photo or a piece of a photo on the floor. Grab it and come to the large fire pit, so not the fire pit in the rave area, in the recreation area, not that one, the major fire pit that has the totem pole that's landed in it, and if you're opposite that fire pit, you should be able to place your photo down onto the floor. This will start a mini soul collecting ritual of sorts, and what you've got to do, the aim of this ritual, is to shoot the arms of zombies. So you're essentially jibbing the zombies and blowing their arms off. But you've got to be careful because if you get a regular kill, it isn't going to do anything. You need to specifically aim for the arms here and try and shoot off as many zombie arms as you can. And once you've done it, you'll see that there'll be a glowing sort of blue orb around where the photo was. You'll be able to go over to the photo, hold square, and the slasher will spawn in right in front of you and start attacking you. At this point, you're probably going to want to get out of his way, first of all, but you also need to be very careful of the fact that you need to kill him in a limited amount of time. So use your gas grenades, they're fantastic on him. Use your bio spikes, use your crossbow, the Vlad, if you've already got that, you really should have that by now, or at least you might as well get it. There's guys for that on my channel as well. I highly recommend that for the rest of this Easter egg, by the way, I'll get to that in a moment, but... You want to basically take out the slasher as fast as you can and beware, because if you fail this step, if you don't kill him in time, then what will happen is you won't get a max ammo, first of all, so you'll essentially have wasted a load of ammo from doing this step, but you will also end up losing a perk. So you could lose quick revive in solo doing this, and yes, it counts as you losing a quick revive, so be very, very careful. If you're successful though, the slasher will die, he'll drop a max ammo, and you'll be able to go over to where you dropped the photo and basically pick it back up again. At this point, you need to go over to Kevin and refresh his memory of things a little bit. So you go back to the island via the boat, you talk to Kevin, you say, hey, I found this photo or whatever, and then you're able to go and find another photo in the map. This second one is going to be again in the Tough Nuff room, so that's the attic of the spawn area, and this one is just by where you found the propeller for the boat. So it's on the floor there in the corner, and it will only spawn in once you have completed the previous step and talked to Kevin. In other words, you have to have the first half of the photo before you can get the second half. Once you grab the second half, go to the rave area of the map, the recreation area, and drop the photo down another ritual will start. Now for this one, I highly, highly recommend that you use a balloon trap like I am doing in this video here. They're 
easily buildable in your game. It's just two blue gems and a yellow gem in any totem will give you a balloon trap. And all you've got to do is plop it down where you place the photo while the ritual's happening and all the zombies will float into the air and charge the soul box. Now, if this doesn't work, for example, if this gets patched or something, use explosives, try and blow their legs off, things like that. That seems to be the angle that most people are going for. But certainly at the time of making this guide, the balloon trap is 10 times easier than anything else. So use that. Also, if anything seems to not be working for you in this guide, then go into the description and I'll no doubt have an update so that I can clarify things or if there's a patch, I can specify what the new step needs to be. Once you've done that defense, you're going to again need to kill the slasher as soon as possible. Use those bows, use those grenades, use any traps that you might have remaining as well. So if you've used your balloon trap, maybe a teammate has another trap you can use. Try and kill the slasher as fast as possible. Same deal as before. And if you succeed, you'll get your max ammo. You'll be able to pick up your photo piece and then you'll be able to go back to Kevin, talk to him again, and you're really near now to actually getting to the end of this Easter egg. Just one more defense to go pretty much. So what you do at this point is talk to Kevin, like I've said, then go back to the main island and you're going to want to go to the downstairs area where the power switch is in the spawn. Okay, so go to the power switch and in that room, you'll find a skull in a sort of box with a load of other bones. Pick that up and you're going to use this for another defense. And this one is going to be on the beach. It's very, very similar to the stuff that we've been doing before. You put it down, except this time you're going for headshots. So you get all your headshots on the zombies once you've put the photo down on the beach. You'll then have a blue orb on the photo. Hold square. The slasher will spawn. You kill the slasher as fast as possible. And voila, you'll be able to pick up that final skull and you'll have completed your item set. After that, you can go and talk to Kevin. I'm sure he's probably got some interesting dialogue here, but the next thing you need to do is to go into the downstairs area of the map where you found the skull, okay, below the spawn, and in there, there will be a series of red buttons on the wall. If you're in a co-op game, all your team need to come. If you're solo, it's just you. You just go over to the buttons. Each person gets one button each. Hold square at the same time if you're in co-op or if you're solo, just hold square on the one that isn't lit up. And what should happen is it will play a little bit of audio for you. It sounds like someone is behind the wall. And then you're actually ready to go to the boss fight. So really, this hasn't been that bad so far at all. Now, how should you prepare for the boss fight? Well, I think that having a max ammo for Infortune card is useful, but definitely not necessary because you get a lot of max ammos during the fight. My personal preference is having some kind of uh, assault rifle or SMG pack-a-punched or potentially double pack-a-punched with bang-bangs, and then for my second weapon, I usually have an upgraded crossbow. So. In this particular clip, I have an upgraded bow and my teammate has an upgraded bow just because it's nice to have that kind of insurance. I wouldn't necessarily go with two upgraded bows just because there's a step in the boss fight that means that it's kind of useful to have an assault rifle that can shoot super duper accurately. So get your upgraded bow or whatever. Like I've said, guides on my channel. Get your bang bangs, get your quick revive if you've got teammates, get your fate and fortune deck refilled. Get your traps if you want to get a boombox or something like that. That might help you along the way as well. Get prepared for the fight and then head over to the boat and jump in. You'll see that Kevin, good old Mr. Smith, is already in the boat. And this will be the introduction to the boss fight itself. And by the way, obviously, if you're in co-op, then your team need to go over there to the boat and get in the boat with Kevin. So you get in the boat, it plays a little clip, and then you jump out of the boat and you're in the boss fight. So there's this big, lean, mean Kevin Smith machine jumping around trying to kill you. There are three main stages to this fight, okay? For the first stage, there are three skulls in the boss fight arena on the island, and each one is glowing blue. You've got to go near each skull and kill a bunch of zombies such that the skull floats into the air because it's charged by souls. What a surprise. But kill a load of zombies near it, and once you have killed enough, it will look like it's sort of a kind of beacon, I suppose, that will be shining down in that area onto the ground. 
you need to have all three of the skulls in this state simultaneously. So all three of them need to be fully filled, they'll go up into the sky, and then it'll kind of not really drop down, but a light will shine down onto the floor that's super bright, and that's how you know that you've completed that particular skull, and you want all three of them to be lit like that at once. So designate different players to different areas, fill the skulls up, get them all the way to the top, it'll light up, and then you'll have completed that step successfully. Congratulations. The next thing you need to do is lead the boss into whatever area is lit up in the map itself. So on some part of the boss fight arena, there'll be a circle that you can walk the boss through, and if you do it successfully, he'll become vulnerable for a moment, and uh, when that happens, he'll have a circle on him somewhere, or if you can't see it, I recommend you just shoot into the boss, and uh, this will basically trigger the next step of this process, okay? Somewhere on the boss, you should now see a purple glowing symbol, and that is your target that you need to shoot. So it might be on his right arm, his left arm, his leg, or maybe his stomach, his chest, something like that. Shoot into that, it's basically denoting which part of him is vulnerable at that time, and once you've shot into it enough, you'll see that it will move to a different part of him, and you're gonna end up doing this maybe four, five, six, maybe even seven times, something like that. Like, it takes a little while, but once he's done it, he'll drop some kind of sort of spikes onto the floor, so watch out for those, and then he'll jump up to the roof. Now, here, you've gotta be careful, okay? He is going to mark out a safe area of the arena for you to stand in. So it'll be some green circle somewhere, and so what I recommend you do is, as soon as you finish the previous step and you see him jump to the roof, get to the middle of the arena and get ready to look around for where that green circle is going to be, and look towards the boss to see where he sort of casts it as well if you like. As soon as that happens, as soon as you see that circle, run into it as fast as you can, because everywhere else is going to start damaging you like the floor is lava style, and skeletons are also going to spawn as well. So get into that green circle, defend yourselves for about 30 seconds or so, so use your gas grenades, spam your bows, etc., and... If you complete it, the boss will be damaged, and the entire process will then repeat. So that, that I have just described, was one cycle of this boss fight. And throughout that cycle, you'll have had several max ammos after each individual stage. Now, you need to do the whole thing again, but this time, there will be blue walls that are kind of hard to see at first, but they'll spring up out of the floor and stop you from taking certain routes in the area. So be extra careful of what's going on around you and just very spatially aware, essentially, and go through the same steps. Shoot a load of zombies to charge the skulls, and they have to all be charged simultaneously, then run the boss through a circle, one of those circles that spawns on the floor, and then he'll become vulnerable for a moment, shoot some shots at him, and that will trigger the next step. He'll have a purple symbol on him, shoot all the purple symbols, that'll take about a minute or two, something like that, and then he'll send some spikes out, he'll jump on the roof, he'll designate a safe area, you get the idea. The third time round, though, so for the third cycle of all of this, the skull step can be a little bit harder to do, because you have to be really careful that one skull doesn't fall down and descend while you're getting all the others up. So keep a close eye on which is doing what, and keep them all sort of boosted as you go, and you should be fine with that, and get through the rest of the fight, and then once you've completed that third cycle, instead of basically starting the cycle again, the boss will just stick around in the arena. And at this point, you'll notice that you're getting hit markers on him and stuff like that, and at that point, it's just time to lay into him. So spam all of your ammo into the boss, he should die. Once he's dead, grab the bit of soul key that drops out, and you'll roll straight into the intro cutscene. One thing I want to quickly note here is that he won't jump back on the roof for a third time during the fight, because he only does that when he still has lives remaining. I've been Mr. Off Waffles, hopefully this has been useful for you guys. If you've enjoyed it, please leave a like, I've tried to be nice and clear, and there will be further clarifications in the description as always. Your likes are massively appreciated. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye.